Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nipuna Banfala. We are joining for another amazing I Volunteer series uh, talk show episode. So I know there's been a little bit of a gap. Uh, we haven't published uh, uh, very many I Volunteer series talk show episodes in the past couple of months. That's because we've been really pivoting our organization to the pandemic, putting together softwares and solutions to support people in the front lines, volunteers in the front lines. So we are really excited and privileged to be doing that work, but 20, 20, 21 is here, so we are starting off with a good food uh, and uh, one of my you know, good friends here, uh, Ikram. So Ikram is the founder of 2NU Foundation. So Ikram, thank you so much for being here. Thank you mm -hmm. for the work you do. I'll give you a couple of seconds to uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Nipuna, for having me here today. Um, so my name is Ikram Ali Muhammad, co-founder and CEO of the 2NU Foundation. More so than that, I'm a son, a brother, um, and, and I like to think of myself as a great friend and someone who pushes others to, to be their best and make sure that when they say something, they have action behind those words. Um, so a lot of people end up uh, coining me as a social entrepreneur, investing in friends, family, and people, uh, but more than anything, I'm just someone who wants to help make a change. Absolutely. So uh, I want to tell all of our viewers, actually, so more than uh, what you learned from Ikram's foundation and starting out, uh, just by kind of listening to him, <laughs> you get a really positive vibe. <laughs> I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like at the end of this video, there'll be a lot of people, you know, kind of feeling really <laughs> positive and, you know, nice. Uh, mm -hmm. Because Ikram, you really kind of, you know, put that, uh, put that ni positive personality out. So I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I want to start with a big question. Tell us a little bit about 2NU Foundation, how you started it, and what's the story? Yes, of course. So this is my favorite joke to say. So it's called the 2NU Foundation, but there's only one of me here today. Um, so it's called the 2NU Foundation because myself and my amazing friend and now girlfriend, um, Sarah Berwani, a student at Georgia State uh, University Nursing School, um, me and her in 2016, um, we just felt like there needed to be a change in the city of Atlanta regarding homelessness. So all of this started just walking in, uh, on the streets while we were at Georgia State University and seeing the homeless um, uh, crisis just all around us here in Atlanta. It's um, a place where homelessness is a big issue, not just in America, but in the world, right? Um, so it started there just focusing on homelessness. We started as the Flipped Home Initiative. Um, and then we realized that our scope and the issues that we care about goes past just homelessness. We want to make a lasting change, whether it's uh, legislative, whether it's just social, whether it's economic changes, uh, more, than, more than just in the homeless sector. Um, so then we teamed up with my older sister and a few of my friends, and we created the 2NU Foundation, led by Sarah and myself still. Uh, and now we have a board and a few amazing team members. Uh, so it's more than just us, but we all are committed to the same mission. And that's creating a platform of tools for, for someone uh, our age or someone around our age, young adults to make the change that they want to see in their community. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Ikram, I know that I have spoken to you about 2NU Foundation before. And uh, you know, to all of our viewers, Ikram and I uh, met in a different platform at the University of Georgia. But uh, tell me, if you don't mind, the story, the sandwich story. <laughs> yes, yes. That, that's, a, that's a really you know, <laughs> amazing story. I call it the sandwich story, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, about how you actually started out, you know, before it became an organization, just you and your girlfriend kind of yes. started that impact, right? Yeah, so I, I was about to hit on it, but I, I waited until we, we had another uh, segment, but the sandwich story. So like I said, mom, myself and Sarah Berwani, the co-founder, were at Georgia State in Atlanta um, in 2016. We had just started college and walking uh, to our classes, we would estimate about 70% are other students and 30% are homeless individuals walking alongside with us as we're going from class to class on the streets of Atlanta. And um, next to us are people uh, who are wearing the same clothes they've worn for an entire year. Um, wearing, eating the same food that they were eating last week, saving bits and pieces of it. Um, so Sarah and I, we would always walk to class and uh, about a month into the, the semester um, as freshmen, we were always just concerned and we wanted to do something. We, we didn't know what to do, but we knew we were gonna do something. And that stemmed from Sarah. She always, we would go back to her, to her uh, dorm and she would always say, I need to do something. Tears in her eyes, almost on a daily basis. 
Uh, so one day we're we same going through that same journey and we get back to her her dorm and she puts her book back down and starts crying and I said you know what did I do did I do something wrong like did I you know um, and she's like I'm I'm gonna do something today I'm gonna do something today for the homeless people downstairs just outside of the the dorm building um, and she decided to just open her pantry open her fridge and make peanut butter uh, and jelly sandwiches so we made about ten to twelve. Uh, and we went down and within two, three minutes, all of them were gone. Uh, we had handed them all out. In the span uh, of that time period, we had ran into a few of our friends who lived in the same dorm building. So when we got back up, they asked us, you know, what, what were you guys doing? Why are you guys just outside um, handing sandwiches? And we were just like, we, we want to make a change with this, whether it's something small like handing sandwiches or, or whatever the case may be. And it, it was just a domino effect. Then those friends said, okay, tomorrow, let's do the same thing. Let's make sandwiches, let's hand it out. Um, and then it turned into a little bit more. So we did that for about a week, making sandwiches, handing it out. And no matter how much we made, whether it was five sandwiches, 10 sandwiches, a hundred sandwiches, it would, we would go down and within five, 10 minutes, we would be back up all the sandwiches handed out um, to unique individuals. It's not like one homeless individual is taking 10, it's unique individuals, families. Um, and it was just a, a very kind of a growing experience, but very painful to know that we're upstairs in a dorm building full of our peers um, with all these supplies and resources and people are right outside the door without those necessary things just to survive. Um, so it grew you know, from our friends to you know, her neighbors, things like that, who were our friends as well. And then we decided it was winter coming up, November, December, and we wanted to do something more than just sandwiches. We wanted to do something with blankets, with additional food supplies, um, non-perishable food items. Um, and so we kind of got our community together. Um, me and Sarah come from a, a smiley Muslim community rooted in volunteering. I always joke with Nipuna that since we're born, like we don't cry first, we volunteer somewhere first. Like it's all <laughs> about giving back and being selfless. Um, and so in that community, with our friends and family, with our aunts and uncles, um, we were able to raise what I think uh, we helped 350 homeless individuals raising, um, uh, uh, getting thousands of blankets donated um, and thousands of pounds of food donated all within a, a what, four week period with no established foundation, wow. no established Facebook page, no nothing. Um, it was just us and our community. And, you know, we helped the homeless um, individuals on that winter break and we thought we did a great job and this is the continuation of the story for, for Nipuna this is the impactful part yeah. so we helped homeless individuals it was at a park called Hurt Park in Atlanta right in the center uh, we took white U-Haul trucks two of them uh, took our tables out uh, had our volunteers line up and start handing out a sandwich table uh, a snack table a clothing table and we had a line all the way across the park or around the park, I should say, um, of hundreds of homeless individuals. The line was so long, we didn't even help all of the individuals that came because uh, we ran out of supplies within 40 to 45 minutes, getting that much food and supplies donated. So we thought we did a great job. We handed out the food, we took pictures, we, we were celebrating with our friends and then we packed up and we left. I had a great friend of mine who was actually at the event and he sends me a link to a news article, a local news uh, article from about two years ago. And it was about a church group who wanted to do something for homeless individuals uh, during the winter months. And so they decided to collect blankets and clothing items, uh, other clothing, clothing items and snacks, uh, pack two U-Haul trucks or something around there um, and go to Hurt Park and distribute the food. Uh, and then they went, they took pictures, they did everything and they left. And the most impactful part of the story is this. When he sent me that article, this is one of my best friends. Um, he says, food for thought. You know, what kind of impact did you make? You know, maybe in the short term, we help these individuals. But in that news article that we were sent, there was at least three homeless individuals that we could identify who are also at our event um, year, two, two years later. So in the short term, we, we may have helped. But in the long term, what impact did we make? And from there, the seed grew that in anything we do, we want to make a long-term impact with these incremental projects. Um, and so our just uh, kind of flipped home initiative, we ended up pointing it um, for homeless uh, initiatives, turned into a year later, the 2 and You Foundation, this platform uh, for, for change. 
you have in the beginning uh, worked at least, you know, helping people who don't have a home, right? Uh, in essentially homeless people. Mm-hmm. I want to take this opportunity for people who are kind of listening from around the world, right? Especially a lot of young people, that's our audience. Uh, homelessness is not something really cornered into a part of the world or cornered into an age or gender, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Homelessness is around the world and anybody can go homeless at any time. That's something that we need to understand. Either it's because of economic shocks or disaster, you know, homelessness can happen to anybody. Uh, And so I want to kind of have a conversation about removing some stereotypes about homeless people, right? You first mentioned how when you were walking back from your classes back to your, you know, apartment, that there were students hardworking students who are trying to get an education to invest in their future are also homeless, are also struggling with food, right? And sometimes the first year type people jump to, the first conclusion they jump to is homeless people are lazy. You know, Mm. they just don't want to do anything. They want to sleep on the road and they just want to get food for free from somebody. So what has your experience been like when you're talking, when you're working with these homeless people, you know, especially students, like tell us a little bit about, right? Removing those stereotypes, you know, that they're not lazy. They're people who are trying to work hard and trying to come Mm. out of this cycle. Uh, What are your thoughts? Yeah. So I've been working with homelessness in any way. It's been such an intriguing uh, kind of development, social development, right, around us, Um, especially here in the metro Atlanta area. I've been doing projects with homeless individuals since middle school, going on the streets and speaking with homeless individuals, like being a part of other organizations and and such. But since I was in middle school and high school, leading some of those initiatives um, with groups like Working Together for Change here in Atlanta, started by young adults at the time. Um, and the first thing my parents would say is, aren't you scared? You know, like these are drug dealers. These are, you know, these might not be good people. And of course, even from TV shows, right, that we grew up watching, you get that same idea. Yeah. The first homeless person I ever spoke to in middle school was um, a former PhD student who had uh, at a party taken drugs once, you know, experimented, but since then was on a downward spiral a former PhD student with one mistake who is now on the street and hadn't had, uh, she hadn't seen her friends in years, or family in years. And another important aspect of that is, I said she, it was a female homeless uh, lady. And over the last few years, especially when I was in high school getting into college, um, I worked a lot with homeless individuals that were women or children. In fact, that homeless event we did in 2016, there was so many families, full families, or just women and children that came. And over the last few years, I, I looked a lot into the research of how domestic violence has a correlation with homeless rates, especially here in Atlanta. And so a lot of the homeless people you see, um, there is that stigma attached and stereotypes exist, I think, because you just naturally we want to find patterns with people and categorize them. Even me, when I walk into an airport, somehow I always get checked, you know, like, you know, before, <laughs> yes. I, before I say anything, I get checked, right? Um, just people. I can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, at, at any level, there's stereotyping that goes on with homelessness and other areas that 2NU is focused in refugee resettlement, so much more equity, whether it's environmental, whatever the case may be. We learn from a young age these stereotypes. Um, but backing those stereotypes is this idea that these are systemic issues, right? These are systematic issues. And the reason we can stereotype is they've existed for a long time. And there's proof behind the pudding, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, But really, if you go out and what we do is we try to make uh, other young adults get out into the front lines. And Napuna, you do that too, right? Mm -hmm. Across the world, you try to make people get into the front lines in the local communities. Mm -hmm. You see that there isn't really a stereotype you can apply because every story is so unique. Um, And so with homelessness, that's all I can say is I wouldn't, you you know, say, just live with that stereotype in your head. I would say, you know, become a part of an organization, go volunteer. And if you want to learn more about um, a certain uh, sector like homeless individuals in your city, then go volunteer and learn more. Don't just rely on what you've relied on your entire life because you need to take actionable steps to make that change. Yes, absolutely. And and thank you, Ikram, for sharing your you know experience, uh, especially from a young age, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Especially from the stereotypes that are built in us, as you said, TV shows, what people have said, you know. And 
it's important that you said go out there and volunteer because sometimes you may have homeless individuals right in front of your house and you may pass them every single day but you just need that one conversation to realize that uh, that homeless person can be a former phd student that homeless person mm -hmm could have be, had, had led a nice life, but just lost their house for a natural disaster and now can't afford to live somewhere, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And something happened to them, you know, they got unemployed. So it's it's really um, sad that that stereotype has held up when we very really know that it could very well be our friends, our neighbors and ourselves who can go homeless at any time. And how would yeah. we want to be treated when we are at that point, right? So I think uh, that's a really important, uh, valuable lesson. So. I want to kind of shift, shift back into the future and, and the foundation that you have built. Right now, it's an actual organization. So uh, what are some uh, short-term achievements you've had and what are some long-term aspirations and visions for the, for the foundation? Of course. So short-term, I'm going to butter you up a little bit, but being in conversations like these, uh, since we started uh, getting invited to uh, conversations where we get to interact with other young adults and leadership groups, um, even before we were an established foundation, I should add, just by you doing work, people recognize it, right? So in Metro Atlanta, we heard a lot with the recent uh, election in the United States counties like DeKalb, Gwinnett. Um, those are areas that are very important uh, in the country and the state, and we get to speak in, in counties like that, and we have since we started just doing volunteer events. Um, so those are, you know, that's one short term uh, achievement that we've had so far, um, helping various different uh, lines of, of, of kind of impact that we want to go down um, is another thing that we've really achieved in this short term uh, of four years. So like I said, homelessness, refugee resettlement, Clarkston, Georgia is a hub of refugee resettlement. Again, it's a, in, on an international level, not just a national or state level. Um, and I think the next thing we wanna do, and I would say this is an achievement because we are very introspective and we know that what we've done so far is great, but there's more to the story that we can add. There's more chapters to write. Um, and that's really wanting to go down a path of equity, right? And so one way we're doing that is by creating a micro grant, uh, micro grant program for our foundation. So if I can explain that a little bit as well. So the three main services that we offer in our foundation are consulting. That's just really us working with you. Uh, once you come to us to make your idea go from point A to point B, uh, collaborating. So we, uh, even when we're not doing events, we're always partnering and working with uh, local organizations, whether big or small, so that when it's time for you to come to us with an idea, we have an established network for you to immerse yourself in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's our collaborating aspect. And then we have funding. So this is something that sets us apart. So every project that comes to us, uh, automatically you can apply for a micro grant of up to $500. Now, a lot of us in the kind of research or nonprofit space, when we hear the word grant, we kind of turn away and we, we don't, we don't, we, we want to pursue we it. If we see the, <laughs> yeah, if the requirements aren't too much or the, the rules aren't, aren't too long or the, you know, our grant is different. There's not, you know, 30 pages to write, 30 pages to, to read about first. It's just five to seven questions, very short. And if you're eligible, um, for a micro grant, um, then we automatically apply it to your project and we help you utilize that $500 uh, to the best of its ability. One example is, let's say you wanna do a project and you wanna raise more than $500. You have that $500 to start off with and we wanna raise that over $500. Let's say $2,000 we wanna raise to donate to a local hospital, especially in these times of COVID, maybe just donating to a hospital can help them. So you come to us, and we say, all right, we have $500. Why don't we buy some merchandise, some shirts, some mugs that you can sell to your local community, friends and family, and turning that $500 into $2,000, donating it to make that financial impact. Now, that's just one example. And it's very kind of uh, a standard example. We want to go beyond that standard into exceptional uses of that micro grant. But that one example I wanted to, uh, wanted to say, because we actually did it already. And we did it within a span of a month, taking that 500, turning it into 2000, donating it to a local hospital here in Atlanta. Um, so there's multiple uses for it, but I think pairing the micro grants with the collaborating, with this consulting, which is just us working with you um, in the short term has turned us into a very power, uh, powerful hub of knowledge transferring, of working with one another and making actual change. When you see actual change, when you measure actual change, that's the best feeling. Um, so, and that, 
slowly takes me into my long-term objectives, yeah. better measuring our impact. Um, so I think we've done a great job uh, in school and college. I just graduated, but I majored in finance and information systems. Um, I think I've had a good background of uh, analyzing quantitative data qualitatively and analyzing qualitative data quantitatively, right? Um, and I love uh, kind of making metrics and, and using metrics to, to see the impact that was made. But how can we better do that? For our past projects, there was ways that we did it. But to see that long-term effect, you know, I think there's better ways to measure impact as an organization, right? So that's something more internally, but it affects us externally because it it's it kind of uh, will impact who sees uh, what we've done, uh, what changes we've made. So better able to, to measure the changes that we're actually making as something long-term that I'd like to pursue. Uh, because all these short-term pursuits that we're doing, the micro grant, the working uh, to make you a network when you come to us, those uh, are going to be established, right? And those are going to continue to grow. But how can we tell you, and we used all of that to do this. And that's where we're heading to long, long-term. Um, Ikram, when was the organization, uh, like what's the year you would say that the organization first started? Like which year? Yeah, so I would say 2017. Uh, and then uh, really, if we wanted to say the inception was the Flipped Home Initiative, that was 2016. Um, okay. but 2017 started, 2018 kind of got the nonprofit status. Okay, perfect. So, you know, we'll just say 2016, right? From the first day, you kind of had the idea, you know, with Sarah and kind of developed it. So my next question is kind of on a, on a more personal level, right? And a lot of people who want to start social movements, uh, they, we do this in our action to impact uh, volunteer training as well, right? For university students around the world. The first thing I say is, it's okay to have an aspiration to change the world, but I always know that it's not going to happen tomorrow because if you think you can do it tomorrow, then you're so anxious about everything you're going to need. You know, you need a mm. hundred thousand people, a million dollars, you know, because yeah. that's what you will need to change the world tomorrow. Right. So, so as a young person who just graduated um, and, you know, kind of not having, you know, uh, that sort of change the world resources overnight, what what can you tell people who are watching this video who have a passion for a cause, right? Um, how can they be involved? How can they start something like you did? Uh, how can they maybe understand their passion, learn more about it? Where we really want to change the world and, and change the trajectory of where the world is going, but mm -hmm. you, know, you can't do it overnight. So how do you actually do it? And what were some of the challenges you faced and any, any advice you can give? No, so that's a great question. And I love all the input you put into that question as well. Um, I would say even us right now, we want to change, make changes that are global, but we're doing everything local, right? Local, statewide, uh, at least here. And that's where you start. You start in your neighborhood. You start even in your own home, right? Um, my, my older sister, who is the board chair, of it, uh, is in an interracial marriage and breaking a stigma in my family uh, for, for getting married outside of a Muslim family was a challenge. But we made that change, right? We, we put time and effort into making a change. And that's not something groundbreaking or, or globally changing. Or is it, if you think about it? Because now there's generational change, right? And you started it at yeah. home. And so that may not be something that impacts homelessness, refugee resettlement, things that I truly want to change with you and you. But that's something in my own household I'm changing. And it's going to impact the generations to come. And it may even impact the generations that are uh, still here living above the young adult generation, right? Um, and so start small. Don't think about changing global overnight. Uh, in fact, don't even think about changing national overnight. Think about changing your surroundings overnight. And to me, my local community was my world. So in a sense, it is my global community, right? Um, because I saw so many challenges, but I, I just wanted to fix so many things. And I just started. Just start and don't worry about the long-term impact. I know we want to do long-term change, but I've always kind of committed to this idea that incremental projects, working with young adults one at a time to make change makers is how we're going to get there. I like that bottom-down approach. I don't like the top-down approach, right? So all of us here that are listening, that are watching, that are part of I Volunteer to win you, other groups, we are all from the bottom making that change up and it takes time. Uh, but know that the change you're making is effective and, and it will impact more than just you, especially if you put effort and, and, your, and your full effort behind it.
yeah absolutely uh that that is that is very true uh especially coming to you know one of the things that we promote that i know you very much agree with is if you don't know where to start just go and volunteer here and there you know and then you'll understand your passion and the scope of the impact you can create so uh, Ikram, I want to ask one last question, and this is sort of a you know thank you question that we uh, allow all of our uh, I Volunteer series guests to answer. How mm -hmm. can uh, volunteers support the organization? Uh, you know, tell us how can they support if they are in Atlanta, Georgia, and how mm -hmm. can they support maybe through online donations or any resources if they're around the world, right? It could be even following you on you know social media and sharing posts. So. Tell the world, how can they support you? <laughs> yeah, of course. So there's a few different ways that you can help support uh, the 2 and You Foundation and what we stand for. One, I would say, please, please, uh, in June, we're going to be opening our applications to uh, for, for project submissions or project ideas. Please, please check out the website, 2 and .org, and just, just you know, look around on our website or apply and, and submit an idea. Um, and we're really trying to get back into the groove of things this year. We took about a few months off, just like you know this speaker series did to recuperate. And, and now we're getting back into the groove of things. So in June, watch out for applications. Um, I would also say to, to be on the lookout to schedule these things, follow us on our social media pages at 2 and Foundation everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can always contact us at contact at 2 if you ever wanna directly reach out to us. Um, via email, or you can always just message us as well on those social media pages. And finally, donate. Um, and I'm not just saying donate financially, but donate your time by spreading the word about us. Um, and just, I would say you can help the Two and You Foundation by you yourself getting out there and making the change that you want to see, even if it's not with the Two and You platform. And you being a change maker helps us and helps I volunteer and helps everyone, I think. Um, so to help us, I would say do what makes you happy and make the change you want to see today. Absolutely. And I want to tell all of our uh, you know, listeners, the links and uh, social media tags will also be wherever the caption is, up or down, depending on which platform you're looking uh, at this mm -hmm. from. So feel free to visit their website, uh, follow them on social media. And uh, as Ikram said, donate your time and also be change makers in your community. So Ikram, I want to thank you so much for being here. Uh, despite your busy schedule, I know you're working and you're you know, managing to a new foundation. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, it was really great and uh, looking forward to some amazing work coming out of 2NU Foundation. Yes, thank you so much.